Believe it or not, all of us creators, including myself, were once beginners at Blender. Right where you are at this current moment, we didn't know anything about Blender. Whether you just started or are still very early in your Blender career, we all make mistakes that helped us grow into the artists we are today. Through running this channel, I've helped many different artists begin their journey, so I thought I'd share some of the mistakes I see beginners make in hopes that we can all learn together. If there's one thing to take away from this video, it would be to stop only using Blender. Blender prides itself on trying to be the one-stop shop for everything, and while technically that is true, it's not the best program for a majority of the things that it offers. This might sound like I'm bashing Blender, but really I love it for the specific things that I think it does really well. Here's a breakdown of some things I would use Blender for versus some things that I wouldn't. As you can tell, there's a lot more underwhelming sections than positive ones. Through my own journey, I've brought in the scope of programs I use because I realize that there are better tools for the job than Blender. Trust me, I used to pretty much do everything inside of Blender, and my shots weren't as good because of it. Once you realize that Blender is a tool in the artist's tool belt, and not the entire workflow, you'll find that you'll start creating more interesting art and can better cater a workflow to your needs as an artist. Here's a diagram of some of the programs that I use and recommend you give a try instead of doing them inside of Blender. In my own workflow, I only really use Blender for the 3D CG and rendering. Everything else I do in other programs that are the best for what I specifically need. For example, I use Nuke for compositing, DaVinci Resolve for coloring and editing, and then After Effects for creating mask and rotoscoping. Find what works for you, but I highly recommend you give other programs a try. The next thing is more about visual effects, however, it still applies to other aspects. Stop rendering everything out as a single pass. Like I said before, Blender is only one step in the process, so why would you limit yourself by combining everything when you can give yourself more flexibility later on? For example, if I'm working on a visual effects shot, most of the time I want to separate the objects from their own shadow, and then maybe I want to have a pass with only the ambient occlusion. Now when I'm in compositing, I'll have all the different aspects of the shot so I can individually affect them rather than having to affect the entire render. If your goal is realism, then this is a must since there are so many things that you have to match to the real world. Even if you are using Blender for animation or anything else, having separate elements rendered out will greatly improve the shot since now you can color specific parts of the animation or even move an element after the fact. Having that flexibility will really change your life and start you on the path of elevating your shots to the next level. Organization is a huge thing for every artist, especially for beginners. Since you're starting out using a new program, everything can start to look similar and you can lose track of where you put something which can halt the learning process. I see too many beginners with a long list of unnamed materials, a million objects named cube, and an outliner with a never-ending list of randomly scattered things. Please do yourself a favor and start developing a method of organization. For me, I have an entire folder layout that I can easily save different files into categories, I name all my materials, I create different collections for specific objects and lighting setups, and I even have a file naming convention that I stick to so that months from now I can go back to an old project and be able to tell where everything is. As a beginner, it'll help you develop good habits and will save you from those headache moments spending an entire afternoon trying to find out which material goes to which object. Last, but something that still confuses me is spending time on your lighting. I still have no idea where this came from. Maybe it's just because I come from a filmmaking background where lighting is drilled into my head, but for some reason, I see beginner shots where everything is pretty well done. Like the camera tracking is good, the assets look high quality, and the framing is all there. However, for lighting, it's a simple point light with a default gray world texture. In filmmaking, I would say that lighting is pretty much 80% of what makes a shot express emotion and look professional. It's like watching a high-budget Hollywood film versus seeing a soap opera on TV. Learn a few lighting tips and watch a tutorial or add a simple HDRI to your scene to create the lighting you want to create. My personal favorite is using the area light in Blender for a softer light that you can use to accent throughout the scene. Adding many of them throughout the scene with different intensity and spread can create a very beautiful shot, so just go out there and experiment. Also, for visual effects, it's very important to match the lighting, and that is what makes your CGI feel very integrated into the shot. Anyways, those are my four mistakes that I see beginners make, and if you can correct them, you'll see a huge improvement in the quality of your work. Thanks so much for watching, and if you like this video, it would mean a lot to me if you consider sharing and subscribing, since it would help me with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks again, and I hope to see you in the next video.